Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Compliance Online Live Webinar Annual Current Food Manufacturing Practices CGMP Trend. Today's event is scheduled to last three skills from us. We have over two decades of CGMP hands on industry experience in both pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturing operations. Our experience covers all quality systems as well as all areas of validation, including process product validation. Facility validation, CSV and 21 CFR Part 11, test method validation, equipment automated process, and cleaning validation. Utilizing strategy. With our definition and what are CGMPs? And as we said in the beginning, the C stands for current. And with all the regulations, and that goes for every single one of them, whether we're talking about just the CFR or the USP or regulations from other regulatory governing bodies around the world, they do get updated. And so therefore, GMP training is not something that can be done one time and considered compliant and never repeated. So it's very important that in your training program that you do have a requirement that all employees have a annual refresher GMP requirement training. Why are GMPs important? Well, as stated, it's government requirement. It is the law. So uh, it is a federal law, and we will certainly talk about the implications of non-compliance, but this certainly very serious up include imprisonments and very significant financial um, punishment. GMPs are also important because they ensure quality products that are safe. It reduces rejects and recalls by having quality systems that ensure that you are manufacturing quality into your process. GMPs are important because if you are creating a quality product and you have reduced rejects and recalls, you are going to, as a result, create satisfied customers. You're going to maintain. Talk about the regulations governing CGMPs. And CGMPs are listed in the Code of Federal Regulations, um, CFR for short. And you'll see it in Part 210 and 211. Part 210 is just definitions, and in Part 211, this is CGMPs for finished pharmaceuticals, and these are truly based to each one of those um, uh, sections, and as you can see, what you're going to be held accountable to in regards to how you set your organization up for CGMP compliance for your organization and personnel. You can find this in 21 CFR 211.22, and the Code of Federal Relations states that you shall, which is a legal term that you must have, shall have a quality unit with responsibility to reject or approve all material, procedures, and specifications. So you need to define this in your quality manual, and you need to develop and implement an SOP and title that SOP Quality Unit Responsibilities. This is something about the other subpart, Buildings and Facilities. And you can find this in multiple sections of the CFR, uh, 21 CFR 211.42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 56, and 58. So let's go through what are the requirements for your building and facilities per the CGMPs. It clearly states that buildings will be adequately sized for proper storage of equipment and material. So you can find this in 21 CFR 211.63, and equipment will be maintained in a good state of repair. So you certainly, as I've said many times, and we'll continue to say with each one of these um, subparts, that is a quality system, and that will be governed by an SOP. So you should have an SOP uh, titled Preventative Ma um, Corrective and Preventative Maintenance, and each piece of equipment should have a preventative maintenance schedule. 
control of raw materials. And you can find this in 21 CFR 211.80. And process control, and what the CGMPs require in regard to that subpart. You can find this in 21 CFR 211.100. And again, it clearly states that there will be written procedures. So, as you can see in every one of the quality systems that we've discussed, I've started out by saying that you'll need an SOP governing this program. So that directly comes from your C and GMP requirement and production and process control. Packaging and label control. So procedures must exist that document receiving, identity, storage, handling, sampling, and testing of labels and ensure that integrity is maintained throughout production and use of products. So labeling must be separated physically in a storage to avoid mix-ups. We said earlier we have specifications, standards, sampling plans, and test procedures. You shall have a calibration and maintenance program. So this is referring to your analytical equipment. Again, SOP driven and it will clearly define the time period for performance of your routine or preventative maintenance. And you need to document all testing, and this should say all testing and maintenance in your logbooks. So you need to have a logbook for every piece of analytical equipment attached to the analytical requires to maintain documentation and again this documentation will be your objective evidence to the regulatory inspectors that you have maintained compliant quality systems so you need to maintain your batch records you need to maintain all of your testing results all of your deviations and yes investigations associated with those training records your maintenance records your cleaning records so truly, records, you need to keep almost everything. And talk about types of regulatory inspections. And it is very important that you, when the FDA shows up or any regulatory body at your facility, that you understand the type of inspection they are there to perform. Because that certainly will set the tone and and will provide a lot of information. So you can have a pre-approval inspection. So this is where they're obviously assessing your quality systems to make sure you are in compliance. So then they'll give you the green light to start um, releasing and with your product to the public. There so the regulatory action as a result of non-compliance, there are lots of legal consequences available to the FDA's disposal. Um, so first we start out with an FDA warning letter, I mean, I'm sorry, an FDA 43. This is your, um, let's consider it like a, a speeding ticket. It's, you know, it's an observation of non-compliance and you'll have an opportunity to fix it before it escalates. But then once we start getting into serious compliance issues and gaps and not correcting these issues in a timely manner or having repeat issues, then you can get into FDA warning letters, consent decree, recall of product, product seizure, plan injunction, you can, company closure, or debarment where you're not allowed to work in a GMP industry ever again.